Good morning. Welcome, bright and early, dark and early here in Utah. Good morning. Welcome, Nicole. Welcome, Justine. And good to see you again, Ginger. Always great to have you. We are live on Insight Timer with uh, today's topic of telekinesis, the manifestation muscle. Hello, Ginger. And um, how we can bio use biofeedback with a telekinesis pinwheel practice to uh, train our manifestation muscle, automatically form neuro new neural connections, strengthen neural connections. Good morning, Nicole, and and weaken neural connections uh, between our flexive will that either does move matter, reshape the the universe in the image in the to reflect our desires or to weaken those neural connections when the pinwheel doesn't move, when we see uh, the flex of will, connecting the flex of will that doesn't move matter. And we're going to to bring this over to telepathy and foresight and, and see if there is uh, a similar biofeedback where we can automatically train ourselves over time to strengthen this, this ability to read people's minds to communicate telepathically and to read the future so good morning welcome welcome rachel welcome marina and welcome evie so every morning we start off with a telekinesis practice so if you could please join us in uh telekinesis if you have a pinwheel, go ahead and grab that device. So what that is, is just something light balanced on top, on top of something sharp. And you want to remove as much feedback as possible. So we're sending these signals to our brain and we're getting a positive signal when we see movement and a negative signal when there's no movement. Now there can be static if there's wind or, or something moving in the environment that, that moves this object that isn't from your flex of will. So we want to try to remove that feedback so that we're not forming false neural connections. Uh, maybe get into a smaller room somewhere where you know nobody's going to be walking around. Uh, there's no fans blowing, no winds, windows open. And uh, you could even put on a light face covering. Um, good morning, Jody. To, to know that you're not blowing on it as you breathe and do this practice. Um, some other pinwheel devices or biofeedback devices, if you don't have something sharp and something light, is you can do uh, work with a candle, flicker a flame back and forth, or blow it out and move that smoke around. That's a, a wonderful low friction. What we're trying to do is, is go from a 90-pound dumbbell to a five pound dumbbell, something that we can know that we're, we're gonna stumble upon our manifestation muscle. And Nicole asked, can a pendulum work? Yeah, absolutely. No, that's one of the uh, examples that I, I always point to is a, pendul a pendulum or something like that. I wouldn't, Nicole, I wouldn't hold it with your hands um, as you can do subtle very like subconscious, very subtle movements with your hands. And we're trying to directly target our manifestation muscle. So if you can hang it on something else and, and fully separate yourself from it, then I would do that. And I wouldn't work with a, a really heavy pendulum. It, 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 if you can do it with just string and something very light on the end, uh, that would, that would be awesome. Um, but of course you can work with a, a heavy pendulum, uh, because the more resistance that you're encountering, um, that if you do this over time, just like going to the gym, um, the more resistance that you're using and you come back to it and come back to it and see little bits of progress, witness that you can, that you are getting stronger. That's how we get stronger. We see the truth that we can lift stronger and stronger things. And when you know that, 
then your body and the whole universe reflects that and you can perform that ability. You can lift higher weights. Your body bulks up and, and gets more tone and lean. So I'm, I'm working with this. This is my 90 pound dumbbell um, where I encounter a lot of resistance because this is contained in this glass container. And I know 100% that any movement happening in here is, um, you know, traditionally or through um, Newtonian physics, it's unnatural. Uh, there needs to be an outside force and there is no possibility of an outside force acting upon this pinwheel. So this is what I'm working with and um, where I see just a little bit of movement over the last two weeks. I've been Every time I go live, this is what I'm working with. Although today I've switched to a small aluminum foil, a much lighter um, object balancing on my sharp object. So let's do this for about five minutes. Um, I'm going to let you, hey, welcome, Kat. So good to see you. I'm so glad that you are here. That's my wife. Um, so I... Let's see, what was I just about to say? I'll try not to talk through too much of this so that you can be doing this and getting the benefits from your own daily practice. Um, but I'll, I'll just start us off a little bit. We want to settle. We want our eyes to be open. I like to gesture to my subconscious with my hands around the device that this is the object that I'm affecting in the universe. And try to stay playful. Um, some things you can think about are, are flexing some of these adjacent muscles like visualization and cultivating emotion. Um, because we tend to flex our manifestation muscle when we do those things in the right way. Um, you can also explore consciousness and try to connect with the consciousness of this pinwheel or candle or pendulum. And as you connect with another consciousness, you start thinking from a higher consciousness because our thoughts are actually consequences. And what's behind that, behind our observations, behind our, our consciousness, behind our body, behind our soul, is this thing called the will and the will moves everything in the universe and the will uh, it's the will of God. It flows through every individual, every speck of dust. And so you are a tiny fractal of this will. Your will is part of God's will and you're connected to God's will. And so by connecting to another entity by another or to another consciousness, another one of these reflections, one of these fractals of God's will, you can move up to a higher perspective, to a higher consciousness, a higher will that moves you both.
Uh, starting practice, if it feels comfortable, let your eyes close for just a moment. Just becoming aware of any revelations about yourself, about how you respond physiologically and mentally, when you encounter resistance and allow for the process of wiring your brain, forming new clusters of neurons, new pathways, linking your will with what moves matter and weakening neural connections between your, your flex of will and what doesn't move matter. Do because the details that we look for, the evidence that we observe determines our reality. It's little by little. What are your eyes open? Come back fully from this practice. Welcome back. Uh, I would love to hear how you're at, where you're at, 
with this starting practice? Do you have a pinwheel? What does your setup look like? This was a wonderful practice for me. This this uh, aluminum foil maybe isn't quite the 90 pound dumbbell anymore. Maybe it's going back to 75 pounds, but I could see movement and it was moving uh, just gentle movements about this far back and forth, which is so exciting. Um, really excited. I don't know if you could see any of that. Hopefully you weren't paying attention to mine because you are doing your own practice. Of course, this is beneficial to see somebody else doing it, to know that it's possible to, to witness somebody doing that four minute mile. But as a, a daily practice, really strengthening your muscle, it's you doing it daily to form those neural connections, um, strengthen neural pathways. Um, so yeah, I would love to hear, Nicole, did you use the pendulum and how did that, uh, work for you? Were you getting the benefit of, of forming new neural connections or were you getting the benefit? Cause this is a no fail practice. Were you getting the benefit of weakening neural connections that didn't move the pendulum? And what revelations did you uh, get to understand about yourself? Welcome, Karen. Welcome, Debbie. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you guys so much for joining this morning. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the format for today. I'm about to get into, good morning, Jennifer, um, This uh, the intellectual framework for what we're doing here, uh, telekinesis as a biofeedback device to strengthen what I call the manifestation muscle, the concept of manifestation as a muscle. Um, I'll tell you about my story, how I've come to, why I'm so passionate about this work and so excited to bring this to you, help you enter this world of possibility, of, of synchronicities, how when we strengthen our manifestation muscle, we, we experience that as an endless flow of synchronicities and joyous action in the world, then we were going to get into telepathy and how we can apply these same principles of biofeedback to train for telepathy. And we'll do a couple of telepathy activities together. Then we'll end with another telekinesis practice. Um, how's my audio? Can you guys hear construction in the background? Hopefully not. I have some filters that are hopefully cutting that all out. Sounds good. Thank you so much for that feedback, Jennifer. So appreciate the interaction. So manifestation, manifestation to me is the ability to cultivate a desire and then watch as the universe reshapes itself to reflect that desire. This is different um, than goal setting, where goal setting, we physically work to move matter and rearrange the universe to reflect our desires. Uh, now, we don't want to use telekinesis to eliminate that need to make effort and to move our bodies because it is so satisfying. That's why we're here in this physical form is to move and to, to feel the satisfaction of physically accomplishing, physically accomplishing something, to build our knowledge that we can do things our knowledge that we can speak a language, our, our knowledge that we can lift that 300 pound dumb uh, barbell. Um, and what, tell, what manifestation brings to the table is removing obstacles to our creation, removing uh, objects that would make it feel like banging our head against the wall as we make effort, uh, make it feel synchronous. And, and literally synchronous, because a synchronicity is mathematically impossible. That, that not only do all of these random events line up uh, to happen in, in just a way, but for it to reflect something that you desire or something that you've just been talking about is completely impossible. There's one in a quadrillion chance of, of that possibility, even more than that. Um, 
So why, I mean, manifestation, we were created, I believe, in the image and likeness of God, our good creator, and being in the likeness of a creator, we are like beings, we are created, creators, we were made to create. So as we do this, as we fulfill what we were made, what we were born here to do, to reshape the universe, to reflect our desires, we are fulfilling our purpose. And doing um, manifestation is like getting on this spiritual rocket ship where you you get your desire. Um, maybe it's a, in regards to relationships. You are thinking about uh, love and, and you cultivate a desire. I want to feel loved. So you get that that desire manifest in the world, and then you can elevate your desire from there. You can say, what would be better? Maybe a committed relationship where I can build a family from. Maybe it's loving each other so much that we can um, do greater things because we're supporting each other and, and, and benefiting the world. And so you're just elevating your desires one on top of another. And so the, the quicker that you can do that, the more that you can get out of your own way to create the, the more spiritual progress that you are accomplishing. And I believe this is spiritual progress that we were made to look through our unique perspective, to see what is good, what we, what we would enjoy to create the universe, to reflect that, to, to reshape the universe, to reflect that, that goodness that we see, to reflect on it and say, did that create? more more enjoyment and more happiness um or did that create more suffering on accident and then we can elevate our desire from there maybe maybe originally wanting just pleasure leads to some negative consequences and so of course that's that's all right it's okay to explore that you're creating and create creativity sometimes gets messy but it's okay we can always elevate our desires from there I love, I feel so passionately about that. Now, this ability to reshape the universe outside of ourselves, maybe that feels a little bit radical to you, that we that, that we can watch as the universe rearranges itself. Sorry, Jennifer, thank you for commenting. I feel like I experience synchronicity a lot, um, and it's impossible. Uh, a lot of, if it's impossible, what is synchronicity? Uh, well, yeah, that's that uh, synchronicity is it's something random that happens to you, but you know that it's not just coincidence and not just randomness because it you want it. It's something that delights you uh, somewhere deep inside of you. You wanted it. You had a desire for it. Uh, I, I hope that you can feel that resonance, that truth in that statement that part of you wanted it. And that aspect makes it mathematically impossible but it still happens it's that is still happening to you jennifer you're really experiencing synchronicities these mathematical impossibilities and yeah you are creating it it's so beautiful and it it's being created from a higher consciousness um and you're connecting with the will of god and the will of god is is shaping everything around you um, and you are this fractal of the will of God. Your will is part of the one will that moves everything in the universe. It holds the planets in orbit. Um, and it, it is very real and concrete. It is truth. Um, and what we're doing is we are observing truth from our perspective and choosing what details to observe uh, that shapes truth going forward because the details that we look for the evidence that we look for determines our reality okay so this radical notion that we can affect things outside of our body is is affirmed by many spiritual teachers nowadays that talk about we are one everything in the universe is one being there's only one perfect creation and if we are one perfect creation, that that is us all around us. And you can think of everything outside of your body like your subconscious, this 
very concrete expression of your subconscious or God's subconscious, what Jung, Jung would call the collective unconscious. Now, we can also look for confirmation in quantum mechanics. And quantum mechanics is so beautiful to me. It is re revealing the mind of God. It is revealing uh, aspects of the universe to us through these simplified uh, models, these mathematical models of the universe that predict things that we wouldn't expect about the universe, things like quantum entanglement um, and things that have made it possible for cell phones and microchips, satellites, all of these things uh, were, uh, we never would have thought to try them out if it wasn't for these this mathematical simplification, these predictions of how reality operates and, and utilizing that to, to create new technology. All the technological wonderland that we live in comes from the, the understandings derived from quantum mechanics. And one of the things that quantum mechanics reveals to us is that there is no separation that we really are one whole creation. And Part of um, how that we get to that point in quantum mechanics is the observer effect. When you observe something, even if it's a hundred million light years away, what what used to be thought is that that is a hundred million light years away. In order to affect it, you can't travel faster than the speed of light, so you'd have to, um, you know, only only something going the speed of light could eventually over a um, hundred a uh, hundred million or yeah a hundred million light years after that amount of time, then it could be affected. But that's not what happens. What happens is the instant you observe it, it changes. The instant you observe anything in life, it changes. And it's it's beautiful. It, we can change the fundamental na nature of reality. And in quantum mechanics, that that mechanic for changing reality is looking for specific details, looking for evidence that that would reveal certain aspects of reality is light fundamentally a particle does it behave like a particle looking for that evidence let scientists know yes light behaves just like a particle its fundamental nature is particle like and when they ask a different question is light fundamentally like a, a wave is it propagating like an ocean wave through an, an ether through space and when they asked that specific question and looked for the details that would reveal that truth, that's what they observed. That's what that particle fundamentally changed to. It's, it's so powerful, so mind-blowing. So if we have this ability to affect things, to change things outside of our body, I, I love to think of it like a muscle. And in fact, you can think of so many other things in life like a muscle, like the way that we go to a gym and strengthen ourselves. We come up against resistance, the edge of our, our ability. And when we do that, and we over time start to see evidence that we can, that we're stronger that we can lift that heavier weight, that we can hold that weight for longer endurance. Then as soon as we know it, when we observe those little details that are evidence of that, then the whole universe reshapes to reflect that knowledge. We get stronger muscles. Okay. Sorry. I got, I was stuck on that notion. Okay. But we're talking about um, manifestation as a muscle. So if it is like a muscle, if we think of it like a muscle and continue using this analogy, the way that we would target, find it and target and strengthen it is we would want to look in a mirror and, and you can do this example um, with a muscle on your face, uh, finding a new muscle. So you have all these muscles around your nose that have the ability to move your nose in isolation. You have some muscles around your ear that can move your ear and you might not uh, know it. You might not have a neural network connecting your, your nuanced will to the ability to wiggle your ears. So if you wanted to do that, you'd look in the mirror and you'd start making effort. And as you start to see some things that you do in your face, then you would you could refine that, start to target and strengthen those muscles 
by getting instant feedback and eventually be able to just wiggle your nose or your ear like that. So that's one thing that I did. And that's how I know that is looking in the mirror and over about a week flexing and working on it and eventually being able to, to strengthen it and move just my ear muscles. So what would be a mirror to, we can apply this, it's called biofeedback and it's so powerful in sports, in, uh, in psychology to look in a mirror and get feedback. We can do that with our manifestation muscle. We just, um, if you've done this before, tried to flex your manifestation muscle, gone up to something and said, I'm like a Jedi, I'm going to move this object. It might, and if you didn't experience success with that, it might have been you going into the gym and going right up to the 300 pound barbell. And, and when that didn't move at all, then you might have said, okay, I guess I don't have this ability. But we, we want to do go up to the five pound dumbbell. And so I'm directing you to the five pound dumbbell where you can, you can flex and stumble upon your manifestation muscle. And as you look in the mirror and flex, you're going to be able to target specifically that manifestation muscle. Now let's move over to this concept of telepathy and the ability to um, connect to another mind and communicate with other minds outside of our body because we can use this same principle of biofeedback to over time strengthen it and i would love to play a game with you and maybe even get some of you to play together so this this ability telepathy let's think together of what um what looking in the mirror of telepathy would look like and and foresight maybe we can do two separate ones um any ideas on what a mirror would look like for telepathy how we could get we, we want to shorten the time scale between our effort and and seeing the result and when when there's a short time scale if we get positive feedback then our brain is going to automatically rewire based off of that feedback it's so amazing and when we get negative feedback, when when we aren't able to read the mind of somebody, then we're going to weaken connections. So Jennifer suggests, I sometimes pick three things to uh, experiment in a day. And I always see them once I picked a butterfly. And as I walked out the books of a bookstore, one landed on me. Incredible, Jennifer. That's so beautiful. Yes. Um, um, yeah, picking three experiments in a day. That's so powerful to look for, for those, that evidence. I love it. I have actually a really similar example, Jennifer, of uh, a butterfly. Um, I'm a, a pretty avid Dr. Joe student. I love Dr. Joe and the healing that he's bringing to the world with his coherence healing technique. Um, and so I was doing a Dr. Joe meditation and in some of his earlier meditations, he asks you to, to ask our higher mind for a sign that we've connected with the divine and, and to show us, to confirm to us that we interacted with our higher mind, with this, the divine and so I was, I was in this meditation. I was like, okay, I want to see a, a beautiful blue butterfly and I'm open to that. And so later, I think it was either that day or the next day. Welcome, Lisa. Good to see you in here. Um, uh, oh, it was at a Dr. Joe event and a, a woman came up. She was wearing a tool, uh, concert t-shirt and uh, from my youth, I love tool. And so I was like, Hey, nice shirt. She's like, yes, uh, thank you. And she gave uh, me and my wife this gift. It was a little medallion that she'd created. And on it was a beautiful blue butterfly. Good morning, Lisa. So that was my butterfly experience, just like you're talking about, Jennifer. Love it. <laughs> Jennifer loves Tool as well. <laughs> yes. I love that they evolved as well, going in into this deep geometric exploration and expression is, is so fun. Okay, so one game I would like to play 
and if you would like to play this uh, with with me, please uh, signal that in the chat. So this is going to be interactive, and I want to pair you guys up so that we can be doing telepathy and reading each other's minds, taking turns. Uh, one one person is going to think of a number, just a, a simple thing like a number. We're going to start with something so easy. There's just a limited amount of possibilities. Jennifer is in. She's playing. So Jennifer needs a partner. If you'd like to be Jennifer's partner, signal that in the chat. So what we're going to do is pick a number, just one, two, or three. So your partner is going to um, hold a number in their mind. And maybe maybe what you can do is put it in the chat. So we've We've got more players, um, Katya and Christine and Howard and Jody. All right. Okay, so let's just pair you guys in order. Jennifer and Katya and Justine and Howard and Jody. Can we get a, a partner for Jody? Um, if we don't get another partner, then you'll have to be my partner. So one of you, and let's go... Uh, odd number. So Jennifer, you you will think of your number first, and Katya, you will guess the number. So Je Jennifer, put your number in the chat, but don't send it yet. So a number one, two, or three, and then Katya, you're going to guess it and send yours first. And maybe maybe do it. Uh, I'll signal all of you guys on the count of three. So uh, Jennifer, Justine. And Jody, you guys are going to, to put your number in the chat. And then when I count to three, everybody, um, Howard and Katya and me, we're going to say our number out loud or chat it. The one that we are, receive from you guys. So this is going to be biofeedback, um, a way to confirm uh, wire new connections. Okay, so I'm going to guess. So let's do this quick because we want to uh, get a lot of this practice in. Okay, one, two, three, send your guess. This was three. Mm, so negative feedback there. I'm going to weaken those neural connections. Uh, Katya, oops. Let's. Or we were going to try and stick with one, two, or three. That was beautiful that you you came to eight. So let's see, Jennifer, her number was three, and Howard guessed two. Justine's number was three. All right, we got a lot of negative feedback there. Let's try it again. Let's try and get into this uh, meditative state. Um, try and shift into alpha, widen your focus and become aware, uh, soften that focus to become aware of the space around you. So Howard says, my first number was three, but I changed it last minute. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Jennifer, eight was my number before I knew it was only one through three. That's so awesome. Katya, you are so connected. Mm, beautiful. Okay, so one through three, let's do it again. This time, let's reverse. So Jody, you're going to be guessing my number. Jennifer, you'll be guessing Katya's number. And uh, oh, oh, let's see, Justine is going to be guessing Howard's number, right? Okay, and if anybody else wants to play, then jump in. And Jennifer had success. It helps to send them the number in your mind. Okay, so I'm going to think of my number. Everybody think of your number. I'm going to send it just like Jennifer suggested to Jody. Okay, let's guess. One, two, three. We do. Looks like we had a few misses again. So um, Jennifer was guessing Katya's number. Howard, uh, let's see, Justine was guessing Howard's number. And Jody was guessing my number. Of this feeling it and then second guessing. All right, let's do it again. And you know, if you do this, 
over time, the principle of biofeedback is that you are training your subconscious from this feedback. So do it often. And over time, you you strengthen the knowledge that you can connect and you find uh, every time that you have success, you strengthen ne- the neural connections between that. All right, let's switch up our partners. Um, let's go with the order that it is here. Peter, myself, Justine, or no, sorry, Peter with Jennifer, Justine with Jody, and Howard with Katya. Number, Jennifer, send that to me. And Justine, you guess Jody's number, and Howard, guess Katya's number. Second, so Katya is asking, isn't the secret to desire from the first time and decide? Mm. Definitely ex- explore that. That's awesome. Okay. So Jennifer, Jody, Katya, put your guys' numbers ready to send in the chat. Don't send it yet. Ready to send your guess and your the number that you're holding in your mind. Three, two, one, send. Uh oh, where'd Jennifer go? One. Oh. <laughs> so we we did have um Katya. Awesome. All right, so we got some positive feedback. We got a lot of negative feedback. That's it's so fun. Um, any other games like this that um, you guys would like to play to get instant feedback? Because as we explore that, as we get feedback, then we can write these neuro connections. The more you practice, the better it is. Love it. I'm so glad that you guys had fun with that. And um, in my experience, the more playful that we are with our creations, uh, exploring these things, uh, the more successful we are when we have a casual and joyous desire where we just want to adore something into life, then we can manifest that into being. So, Katya, love it. Howard, fun. Jennifer, when you know someone well, it seems easier to read their mind. Definitely. And I, f- I feel like you're kind of getting to that that place where we explore that a little bit with our, our starting practice of knowing somebody's consciousness and being able to, to think with them at a higher level of consciousness, that higher will that directs both of you. Fun. So let's let's do just a couple more. I will will put in a number and let's expand this to one through ten. Now everybody, everybody here in the the live, you guys can participate in this. Read my mind, and and connect with me, and and hopefully Cat is still here um, and can read my mind. She knows me intimately, just like Jennifer was saying. Easier to read somebody's mind that you know. Okay, so I'm going to. Type in a number, one through 10. Yes, that's my wife. Love you, Kat. And okay, I'm I'm ready to send my number. You guys can connect with that. Get ready to send your guess. And we're just going to do this rapidly connect. Envision that you're guessing the right number. Get ready to send that in three, two, One, it can be any number, one through 10. Go. Jennifer. (laughs) Nice. And Ginger. It was a bit late, Ginger. Okay. Kat, you connected with my very first uh, number that I was going to do, but then I thought, all right, Kat's going to get that one too easily. So I switched it up. 
All right, let's do that one more time. And then we're going to get into our final telekinesis practice for this morning. Um, so I will think of another number, anything one through 10. Okay, I thought of it. I've, I'm ready to send it. You guys can connect with that number. I'll project it to you. We are thinking together from a higher level of consciousness. How delightful. Now get ready to send it in three, two, one. Send the number. Oh, that was so awesome. That's just what I imagined is eight, eight, eight. Mm, beautiful. Kat, we've got some work to do, some some telepathy marriage counseling to go through. Uh, I love it. Thank you, guys. That was a delight. So fun. Of course, I'm being playful with that. And Peter or Howard asks, Peter, is it possible for you to create a group uh, with all of us? Because I would love to continue practicing these types of games. Uh, I have a group created here on Insight Timer. Um, the groups on Insight Timer are a little bit funny because you don't get any notifications and, and really the only purpose to come to them is um, you, you really have to set that intention to come and interact with this community. But I would love for everyone here to join that community or join me on on X, on uh, twi formerly Twitter, and and we can form a community on there as well. So that, that group, Howard, is Telekinesis for manifest, Manifesting Mastery. Uh, you can find that on my profile or just do a search for that and join. We're a growing community on there. We have about 30 members right now. I would love for that to be in the hundreds, in the thousands, where there's enough people to have continual interaction where we can play games just like this. And on X, you can follow me at um, at Peter Lotus Mount uh, MT. And I would love to, I, I'm actually streaming live on there right now as well. And we can connect, we can send pictures of our telekinesis pinwheel setups. Um, I, I love the, the possibilities of a community on X as well. So we're going to get into our second practice, telekinesis pinwheel practice for today. Um, if you don't have your own pinwheel to participate, you can look through the screen and, and focus on this, this pinwheel right here. Um, and I will be focusing on this guy, my light aluminum foil at the starting practice. I finally started to get uh, some feedback. It was so beautiful to to move this because this this container to me is that 90 pound dumbbell where I'm encountering resistance. And and um, for the last couple of weeks, as I've been doing this, it's been this struggle of like uh, encountering the resistance of, oh, I have to perform beautifully so that everyone here on this live knows uh, that the ability to reshape reality outside of our bodies is possible. But I'm breaking through that. I'm so excited. So the way that this is going to work, I'm going to turn up the music. And I'm going to turn on my meditation voice. And I'm going to lead us through an eyes open telekinesis meditative practice. We're going to shift our brainwave state from beta, this normal uh, brainwave state that we are, are usually operating in, uh, where it, our brain is in compartments. It, it's the the entrenched neural pathways that we're used to thinking in. And it's hard to, to make new neural connections, to learn and to reshape our brain while we're in that beta state. So we're going to open our focus. We're going to change from a, a, a narrow focus to a broad focus. We're going to casually observe everything in our field of view and, and in our body as we gently and casually center the pinwheel in the center of our field of view. We're going to relax our bodies. And from that state, we'll, we'll have dropped into alpha. We're going to, that dissolves all of these compartments. And our brain starts firing as a, a holistic machine. And it's much easier to make new neural connections. And we are going to explore the manifestation muscle. We're going to flex some adjacent muscles. These things like um, why we want to see it move. Um, we'll visualize it moving. We'll 
use some positive affirmations, um, it is possible for me to move this device. We're going to affirm that ability. And then we're going to directly target the manifestation muscle, which we're going to explore simply flexing um, what that feels like to move. Because when, when you form a relationship with your manifestation muscle, you realize it's, it's a lot closer to this action of moving your body than it is uh, generating emotion and, and, and thought even um, because what it takes to do this is, is not a, a visualization. It's not an emotion. It, it is simply a, a desire and a flex of will. You simply move your finger, you move your body. And that's what we're going to do. We're, we're simply going to move the pinwheel and, and we're going to explore how that feels to do that. So this will be about 10 minutes. Um, hopefully you have your own pinwheel and can join in. If not, look through the screen and, and do telekinesis here on this guy. Uh, or we could mentally wrestle our wills. If you want to do this one, maybe we'll fight against each other. Maybe we'll we'll work in harmony and get some big movement here as well. With your eyes open, casually observing the pinwheel before you, start to relax your body from your head to your toes. Start to relax your forehead, relax your jaw, let your shoulders drop and relax your neck. Relax your back and your arms. Feel any tension dissolving and relaxing in your chest. Feel your anxieties and your worries dissolve and dissipate as relaxation spreads down into your abdomen, into your lower back into your hips, into your glutes, relaxing your thighs, spreading that relaxation all the way down your feet, into the floor, into the earth. Take a deep inhale and let it out with no rush at all. Continue to breathe in a relaxed rhythm. With your eyes open, casually observing the pinwheel before you. And begin to expand your awareness. softening your focus to include the entire object before you. Become aware of the air around the object. Expanding your awareness, aware of your hands, resting on either side of the object, aware of the energy around your hands, around the object. Eventually expanding our awareness to include everything in your field of view. Simply holding the object at the center.
Why do you want to see movement in this object? What value are you associating with the movement? Continue to explore the mental possibilities here. Why? Notice the physiological response as you shift this malleable why. And start to settle on a why that releases the most tension in your body. A why that doesn't create overexcitement if there is movement, and that doesn't create tension or disappointment if there's no movement. Continuing to breathe in a relaxed rhythm. Aware of everything in your field of view. Simply holding the object you want to move at the center of your field of view. And now repeat these affirmations in your mind. I can move matter outside of my body. It is possible for this object to move. I can move bigger and bigger objects as I strengthen my manifestation muscle. There is no limit to the objects I can move because my will is also the will of God that moves all matter in the universe. Now, what would it look like if the object was moving? Start to visualize and allow your body to have a physiological response. Let emotions come up as you visualize the object in motion. about to move. And now connect with this object, this consciousness 
outside of your body. This fractal of God's will that holds your object in place. Holding all of its atoms and molecules in this beautiful shape and expression of God's will. With this telekinesis practice, if it feels comfortable, let your eyes close. Allow for this time for your brain to form these neural connections, strengthening the connections, the neural clusters that link 
your flex of will and the ability to reshape reality strengthening those when you saw it weakening the neural connections when you didn't see movement allowing for all of those subconscious processes to take place and now consciously explore and review what you learned about yourself and in this practice review the details the evidence that you can move matter what did it feel like to encounter resistance And these are big, tangible things. And so I, I know that we are meant, especially uh, in, in the New Testament, when Jesus uh, does this uh, cr really radical and crazy thing, he says, you, to his disciples and to the readers, you are meant to do greater miracles than even I have done. You are meant to move mountains. And so I know that that's what we're supposed to be doing. That is the level of creation that's possible for us. And so uh, the telekinesis pinwheel was like this, this entryway, this tiny little seed, this uh, mustard seed of faith that I could grow because I, I could witness that it was possible to do these things, move matter outside of my body. I jumped in head first, did telekinesis practice all of the time started telekinesis club in my high school and uh there was an element that was missing uh because i didn't just start manifesting like crazy uh because i i had never cultivated desire so a couple of years had gone by i was i had graduated high school was still living in my parents basement working at the deadest of dead end jobs at a meat packing plant uh driving an old car in an unhealthy relationship all of these things that I, I, it was just, I was wandering without direction. And I had a wake up call one day I went into work and as I cut work or cut meat the rest of that day, I reflected on where I was at and where I was going, what direction I was going. And if this was where I wanted to be in two years, in 10 years, both with my career, with my relationship, with my living environment, and as I reflected on what I didn't want, I cultivated a desire for what I did want. 
And this amazing thing started to happen as I set a direction, then synchronicities could start flowing into my life. Then the benefits of having a strong manifestation muscle came into play. And I, I effortlessly flowed around my, my resistance to college. I flowed into a career path. And within two years, I was uh, working with nerds, with people that wanted to go in and play and act. And I was, I was doing, I was in one of the best, the top three animation programs in the country studying animation uh, and talking about Star Wars with, with people that I was working with every day. I was married to beautiful Kat, uh, the love of my life. We've been married since then for the last 15 years now. We have four amazing kids together. We we were living in a, our own house in a safe neighborhood just two years after that spark, that moment of where I cultivated desire. And of course, it wasn't just, um, you know, waking up and, and somebody had parked the the car, somebody had dropped off the deed to, to a new home. Um, there was resistance that had to be overcome, but it was a playful um, navigating of that resistance, of uh, exploring what it the worthiness to be loved and to express love to another human being, the worthiness to play, to, to go into work and not feel like it was banging my head against the wall, but feel like it was play joyous. And from that, from then I, I continue to experience an endless flow of synchronicities. That is my life. I'm here on, on vacation right now uh, with the most amazing group of friends that flow synchronistically into my life and um even some other amazing things happening like oh it just all through the day little things happen um what are some other beautiful things that i need to write these down because i i love to be able to to bring these the evidences to you guys so that you know what's possible um and so that you can you can have that that the strength of um but the, the confirmation that you you should stick with this. You should do a telekinesis practice and stick with it. Um, so let's see, what was, um, I mean, something major happened. Uh, me and my wife are buying a new home and that was a flow of synchronicities of um, finding a home that was beautiful, that was near both of our parents because we want to be near them. We don't know, um, you know, the, the most amount of time that we can spend with them and have our kids spend with them, the the better. So we found this house. There was already an offer on it, but it just clicked together. It actually had been taken off the market, but it came back on the market with just the right financial like situation where it was owner finance for the first year. Mm -hmm. So we had plenty of time to sell our old home and it was this no pressure um, situation, just beautiful synchronicities. Uh, Jen, uh, Asha says, beautiful story. Thank you for appreciating that. I, I love to be able to share that with you. Jennifer says, I've done this with a candle flame. Awesome. You can make the flames jump around, had fun. Thanks. That's a beautiful story. And Jennifer says, hi, cat. Yes. Moving through creation with ease and grace. So, um, yeah, I look forward to your story as you create something beautiful from your unique perspective. And I love that to introduce the telekinesis pinwheel practice to you, this way that we can give biofeedback to our ability to reshape the universe. Asha says, it's also so beautiful to witness uh, the day starting right behind you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I was just appreciating that myself. Oh, I love that. So I'm going to jump off here in just a moment, run and, and hike through Zion's National Park. It's so beautiful. Enjoy this, this beautiful environment in St. George, Utah. Um, and I hope that you have a beautiful day. Um, oh, some, some announcements. I, I'm live here every single day. Uh, I've opened up the, the Manifestation Muscle Gym so that you know that there's a community of people do this every day, that you're not alone, uh, strengthening your manifestation muscle, doing telekinesis, moving matter, 
reading minds. There is a community of mystics here every day that you can interact with. You can join that group that I mentioned to Howard, uh, Telekinesis for Manifesting Mastery here on Insight Timer. You can follow me on, on X. Uh, I have some meditations coming out. I just released a new med meditation, extremely powerful, called Absolute Adventure, 10 minutes to... Um, uh, let's see, I forget what it's called, but it, it's a 10 minute meditation where you are um, opening yourself up to adventure and it is extremely powerful. So it comes with some, some questions that you have to answer at the beginning. If you can answer those honestly, then continue with that meditation. Um, if, if at any point uh, you feel like you need to step back, then then do that. Listen to that voice because I want you to do this safely where you're creating adventure and not destroying anything uh, along the way. You know, maintain your relationships, um, maintain um, your job if you need that. But if you are ready for adventure, if you can answer these questions, then get ready because it is so powerful. That's part of why uh, this move happened for me and my wife is I, I made this meditation and did this for a couple of weeks and it was amazing how life started to shift and we've got all of these trips coming up this this trip in in beautiful St. George Utah a trip coming up to Egypt uh, hopefully i can come live to you from there in october anyways I